after a reported accident in West Ames. And the GSB vice presidential debate was last night. We'll have more on that later. And we have some more snow on the way. I'll tell you when we'll see it coming up in your Newswatch 18 forecast. This is Newswatch 18. Newswatch 18 starts now. Good evening and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Newswatch 18. I'm Amanda Clappen. And I'm Tyler Tweeten. Thanks for joining us. After an Ames man was found dead in his West Ames home, 32-year-old Lee LaPon from Boone, Iowa is being charged with first-degree murder. It was initially said that Devlin Lockman had died from an accidental gunshot wound to the head, but LaPon is now being charged because of interviews with people in the home, forensics evidence, and an autopsy report that classified Lockman's death as a homicide. LaPon is being held on a $1 million cash bond in the Story County Jail. The government of the student body vice presidential candidates took part in a debate last night where they spent their time presenting their platforms for the upcoming election. Running mates Barry Snell and Nathan Voss had something else in mind, however, as they said they aren't planning on winning the election, but rather just want to bring the issues to light that the, the electorally motivated candidates will not. Voss said the GSB elections are a popularity contest and to be careful of trusting other candidates' motives. The other vice presidential candidates introduced their platforms that deal with issues central to student life. Candidate Mike Hofer wants to increase academic support like tutoring and an Iowa State Craigslist website. Gabe Walsh's position lies in finance and he wants to save students money by providing free e-textbooks for certain classes. Nick LaFrenz's platform is student diversity through events and dining options. The GSB presidential debate is Thursday, February 27th at 6 p.m. in the Cardinal Room of the Memorial Union. Do you know someone who suffers or has suffered from an eating disorder? Next week, you can support them and encourage a positive body image. February 20th through the 28th is Body Image and Eating Disorder Awareness Week on and off campus. Their mission is to encourage a positive, sustainable lifestyle through the Body Image and Eating Disorder Awareness. Come to the event starting this week and support your family, friends, and peers. Flower shops had their busiest day of the year last Friday on Valentine's Day. ISU TV reporter Richard Martinez takes you behind the scenes of a local Ames flower shop. As most flower shops in the Ames and Iowa State community get busy today, Florama sees Valentine's Day as no exception. Well, there's two inches of snow on the ground. That's not something customers are calling one eight from the flowers. We're coming in very well to Flowerama here at Duff Lincoln Way. Literally hundreds of customers are calling in today, picking up all the roses, balloons, and teddy bears they'll need for their Valentine's Day this weekend. Is there anything I can help you with? Sorry. Yes. Okay, so I get here and it's super crazy. Like it is now. As you can see in the background, there's a ton of people. And then, uh, I just come in and help wherever I can, pretty much, and we do arrangements on the spot if we need to, or if we just kind of get stuff out of the cooler as we need to. So it's a little crazy, and we'll probably have about 300 people in today, so it'll be it'll be an interesting day. Flowerama can see anywhere from 5 to 10 deliveries per hour throughout the day, while florists continually make new arrangements for customers. This is Richard Martinez from ISU TV. With President Obama signing an executive order to increase the minimum wage, federal contractors must pay employees, not everyone is convinced that this is the answer the economy needs. Peter Arezum, a professor of economics at Iowa State, said this increase won't have much of an impact on most government contracts. The order increases the minimum wage federal contractors must pay to $10.10 .10 an hour, but the Davis-Bacon Act already requires contractors to pay a certain amount, which is often more than the minimum wage. Arezum also said that this increase will affect low-wage jobs, but most of the time, minimum wage does not become an issue. Arezum said it would be better to expand the income tax credit in order to help the working poor, rather than increasing the minimum wage. 
Bibles are now being removed from the hotel rooms in the Memorial Union after it received complaints about them. A guest complained in January that it is an illegal endorsement of Christianity over other religions and non-religion. They did not believe it was appropriate to provide Bibles to the guests. The union director responded and said the Bibles will be removed by March 1st. Business students looking to get into international business may be interested in a lecture on campus tomorrow afternoon. Greg Churchill will be speaking about his experience of transforming Rockwell Collins into a global company and the realities of working in international business. Churchill retired from the Cedar Rapids-based firm, where he was the executive vice president. The lecture will be tomorrow afternoon at 2.30 p.m. in the Stark Lecture Hall of the Jardine Business Building. It is free and open to the public. Tax season is well underway, and Iowa State has resources available to students if they aren't sure of how to get them done. Director of the Financial Counseling Clinic at Iowa State, Jonathan Fox, said it is definitely worth it to file as a college student, even if you haven't made much. Fox said doing your taxes should pay you back pretty well if you've had the money withheld, and the process can be simple for students. Many tax preparation sites have free filing that most students working part-time qualify for. If you'd like some guidance, the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance on Campus can help you through April 15th, and the ISU Extension and Outreach also offers tax help. And now we're joined by Andreas at the desk. Andreas, what's happening in Cyclone Sports? I've got the results of the Cyclone Classic ahead and the men's basketball game Saturday. Stick with us. You're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Andreas Afar with your Cyclone Sports. The Iowa State men's basketball team hosted Texas Tech on Saturday. Alan Fidelke has the full recap for you. Iowa State found themselves up 18 at home with just over 14 minutes left. But the Texas Tech Red Raiders would not go down easily as a Jay Crockett layup gave the Red Raiders a 62-61 lead with three minutes to play. But the Cyclones answered by ending the game on a 9-2 run to win 70-64. Coach Fred Hoiberg was pleased with the overall team defense despite giving up 14 offensive rebounds and 24 free throw attempts. Offensively, Iowa State had four players in double figures, led by DeAndre Kane with 17 points, 9 dimes, and 8 boards. George Yang had 17 also, and Melvin Edgem tallied 13. Naz Long came into the game shooting 9 for 43 from 3 in Big 12 play. But Naz got some help from a former NBA player during practice about his mechanics to try and fix his slump before the Texas Tech game. The advice worked as Long found his stroke from behind the arc going 4 for 7 on his way to 14 points. The solution? Coach Hoiberg and I, you know, we worked on a little bit after practice and you know, just on the little fundamentals and little mechanics and stuff, so I'm glad that it paid off. And the big thing that I really, that, that I saw with him uh, while he was struggling, his tempo was just way too quick. And he just, once he started slowing down uh, and seeing the ball go in the basket, uh, you know, you could see confidence start to build. It hit big ones. Uh, you know, it hit four of our five threes today, and we needed every one of them. With ISU TV Sports, I'm Alan Fidelke. The Cyclones defeated Texas tonight at Hilton, 85-76. Iowa State women's basketball team saw more recognition this week as the Cyclones were awarded two Big 12 honors. Senior forward Haley Christofferson and freshman guard Sienna Johnson were awarded Big 12 honors after scoring 29 points and 14 points respectively. Christofferson won her second Big 12 Player of the Week award after shooting 42.8% in their win against Kansas while Johnson won her fourth Freshman of the Week award by putting up eight rebounds also against the Jayhawks. Look for the Cyclones to try and continue their winning season at Waco, Texas on Wednesday against the Baylor Bears. The Cyclones men's and women's track teams finish their home ISU Classic meet with a number of athletes finishing the weekend with personal records. ISU men's track saw three athletes getting first place in their events, including Edward Kembo, who put up the year's fastest 800-meter time in the nation at a minute and 45 seconds. On the women's side, ISU saw five athletes hit new personal records, including Edge Okoro, who ran the fastest 800-meter in the program history with two minutes and three seconds. The Iowa State men's hockey team finished the regular season at home celebrating senior night, but sadly fell to their opponent Central Oklahoma. The Cyclones snapped their 12-game winning streak at home that hasn't, lost, that hasn't seen a loss since November 9th. Although the number 9 Cyclones made the first goal, Iowa State was unable to overcome the heavy offensive surge from Central Oklahoma as they finished the match 6-3, finishing the season at 32-9-3. Iowa State is currently preparing for the Central States Collegiate Hockey League Tournament, which will occur February 21st through the 23rd. 
And that's all I have for your cycle in sports. Corey, will those warm temperatures stick around? Well, we will keep our warm temperatures through our Wednesday, but we do have some changes on the way. We'll talk about it next in your Newswatch 18 forecast. Meteorologist Corey Hargath here on Newswatch 18 here on your Tuesday. We're going to start off with our snow totals from yesterday. Des Moines, 2.3 inches. Ankeny, 2.5, 2.6 at Sailorville Lake. Here in Ames and in Waukee, we saw three inches of snow. Of course, most of that is gone now after our very mild temperatures that we've had over the last couple of days, and they will stick around through tonight and tomorrow. Overnight tonight, our lows will actually be 10 to 15 degrees above normal, but that's going to be very short-lived. Thursday, we have another storm system moving its way through, and I'll show you we do have some active um, watches and warnings right now because of that system, but we're still unsure as to where this thing will track, so we'll talk about that in just a second. Current temperatures across the state right now, 36 in Cedar Rapids and Mason City, 43 in Sioux City, and 44 in Council Bluffs. We'll zoom in on the local area. It's 45 in Ankeny, 44 in Des Moines, 41 in Creston. Move on up to the north. It's 43 in Carroll, 37 in Fort Dodge, and 40 degrees right now here in Ames. Here are those watches and warnings I talked about. Everything in this green is a blizzard watch that will go into effect at 6 a.m. on Thursday and last up through Friday morning. Now, this blizzard watch... Like I said, we're really not sure where the rain snow line is going to be. Some models are putting it up in northwestern Iowa, others to the south, and others right over us here in central Iowa. So we'll keep an eye on that and keep you up to date as well. Clouds and radar, we had a frontal boundary push its way through earlier this afternoon, bringing in that band of clouds that moved its way out. Had a little bit clearing, but now we have some showers just up to our north around Mason City and up into Minnesota. It looks like we're going to stay dry here overnight tonight, but just up to the north they could see a few rain showers. Here we go with the future cast. There's our frontal boundary that pushed its way through this afternoon. High pressure is going to push that out of the way, and then here comes part of our next system moving in. Throughout the day tomorrow, it'll actually get right on our doorstep by Thursday morning, and that's where we're going to start to see our uh, next rain-snow system and looks to be in the early hours of Thursday, and we'll see it right there. This model is putting the rain snow line just off to our northwest, making it very difficult to determine exactly what we'll see as far as rain and snow here in central Iowa. Overnight tonight, we're going to look for 25 degrees. It's going to be mild, but very blustery with winds out of the west-northwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 25 at times, 45 Tomorrow, I don't have to say much more. Beautiful is all it's going to be, just like today. Still breezy, though, with winds out of the south at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Here's your seven-day forecast, 80% chance. I put it as snow in this forecast, but like I said, it could be a mix. It could be all rain, could be all snow. We're still watching that. But these temperatures, they do drop off big time, get down into the 30s for Thursday and Friday. But getting into the weekend, middle 20s for highs, even cooler by the time we hit Monday, 19 for your high and 24 for Tuesday. You can get updated forecasts all, pretty much all the time. Size Eyes on the Skies Monday and Wednesday at 6 o'clock right here on Newswatch 18, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And you can get updated watches and warnings by going to the Size Eyes on the, Facebook, Size Eyes on the Skies Facebook page. You can get all that by going to our website there at the bottom of your screen. That's weather. Back to the desk. C-SPAN will be visiting campus with its multimedia bus on Thursday as part of its Big 12 campus tour. You'll be able to tour the interactive bus from 10.30 a.m. until noon, which will be parked on the Union Drive north of Memorial Union. Visitors can take interactive quizzes about the political processes while checking out all the bus's features, including the two new HD cameras and production equipment that gives C-SPAN the capability to do programming right from the bus. A group of Iowa State students will also take part in a roundtable discussion on C-SPAN's Washington Journal, which will air at 7.30 that morning. And that's all we have for tonight's edition of Newswatch 18. Be sure to join us more on Thursday for more cyclone news, weather, and sports. Have a good night, Ames.